Pastor Alton Parks in here, man. We finna uh talk a little church and try to um what I wanna do is my questions is lined up with how we can close the gap on people that don't go to church. Okay. So you ready for talk. that talk? Yeah, man, it's a talk that needs to be had. It's okay. A, it's, a, it's a real conversation. All right, let me let me get through these uh real quick. We got um we got Detroit cousins, man. Be the change that you want to see in Detroit, man. Y'all go to DetroitCousin.com and shop. He got some nice clothes and um, he got socks and I seen he has some leggings and stuff for the ladies. And he got sweaters, of course, because it's wintertime and hoodies and all of that good stuff. So y'all make sure, you know, y'all shop with them. And then we got Refresh. Y'all know my homeboy Mona. They got um, this day new sweater right here. And they got a bunch of stuff, man. Go check the site out. It's uh, refreshus15.com. And um, I believe they got like a Christmas sale going on now, if I'm not mistaken. But y'all make sure y'all check that out. And, of course, um, definitely go check my stuff out, deucefireclothing.com. This is the sweater I got on today. Yeah, say invest in yourself. Y'all know I got the motivational stuff going. So if y'all want to check that out, then we can, you know, by black that's what people say hey, uh, i guess that's the word it. around town these days it, you know jumping on the bandwagon but before we dig off into pasta i want to uh throw this out there first shout out to these uh beautiful black women right here they say this the first time that um all five been black women yeah it is and that's yeah. monumental that so. is that's crucial right there that, that's yeah. major right there if you ask me what up though, Melissa? Um, we got what's her name? We got Chelsea, Tony Ann. Let me put that back up. Chelsea, Tony Ann. Chelsea won Miss USA. Tony won Miss World. I guess Kaylee won Miss Teen. The African chick. I'm not about to butcher her name, but it's Z O Z I B I E N I T U N Z I. She won Miss Universe. And Nia Franklin won Miss America. So we got a whole board of uh Black is beautiful. It's, it's it's looking good too. They doing a good job, and I don't even follow that stuff. I just seen it, and when they made it a big deal, I was like, it must be a big deal. If it's got to be, it got to be if all five all the way across. And I guess I got to find out how to say this lady name Z O Z I B I N I Zozabini. I'm not gonna try. It. Uh, I, I don't know. I should have watched the video or something. But you know, I bet you if you YouTube it, yeah, YouTube her somebody, 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 said her somebody, name, somebody said got it right. Yeah, but let, let's get off into this. So who is Alton? Who is Pastor Alton Parks? Uh, pastor Alton Parks is the pastor of the Samaritan Baptist Church on the east side of Detroit, 8806 Mac Avenue. He's a husband. He's a father. Uh, he's a member of Phi Beta Sigma fraternity. Uh, he's a friend. He's a brother. All around, he's just a down-to-earth guy. I'm not one of those pastors, man, who uh, so high and mighty that people can't touch him. Right. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a touchable, approachable person. And, you know, that's just me. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm the average everyday guy. I think, I mean, that's, that's what, I think that's what we need to close the gap. Cause I mean, you know, we gonna get into it, but, mm -hmm. um, so how did you get into, to preaching anyway? Man, I was, I'll give it to you long story short. I was 14 years old mm. inside of a revival. There was a guy named Neil C. Ellis out mm -hmm. of Nassau, Bahamas. Mm -hmm. He was doing a revival at our church. I would never let anybody lay hands on me. Mm -hmm. I didn't even let my pastor touch me. Mm -hmm. uh, he did an altar call. I came up to the altar, wanted some prayer. He touched me, said something strange about you. You're not like everybody else. Backed mm -hmm. up from me, said by the time you turn 15, the Lord's gonna call you to preach. 1992, my freshman year of high school, mm -hmm. The Lord had called me to preach. Man. I thought he was crazy. I wanted to be a deacon. I didn't want to be no preacher. Oh. What, what's the difference? Deacon. What's the difference? Um, the deacons are are the servants of the church. They just don't preach in the pulpit on Sunday, but they do. Pastor Reese. Of, I mean, what's his name? Mr. Reese? He's a deacon? He used to be a deacon. Okay. That's uh, the one who uh, slammed me in the water. 
<laughs> That's the one. Yeah, the yeah. one who baptized yeah, you. Yeah, the one who baptized. He yeah. slapped you in the water. He <laughs> yeah, baptized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You. But yeah, he used to be a deacon. Um, and deacons and pastors work very closely together. Mm -hmm. You know, they have a very tight knit relationship. Okay. But the pastor is charged with the overall care of the, of the entire church of, yes. and the spiritual development of the entire church. I be I had to, I, I went to church where well, we had went to Great Ebenezer with my um, nephew. And we were sitting there. He don't really go to church like that. Okay. So we sitting there, and you know, Pastor Murphy up there preaching. Uh -huh. My nephew over there wiggling around. He talking to me. You know what I'm saying? So I'll I be telling people, like, when you go in, you feel it. I remember a lady at my sister's church. She's like, you all right? I just started crying. I was like, she ain't even say nothing. Mm. And I'm like, when it, you know, when it, when it hits you, you know what I'm saying? It hits you. When, when it's authentic, when it's real, uh, you know, spirit speaks to spirit. Right. And a lot of us don't really tap into our spirit nature. Mm -hmm. You know, our spirit man. And that's what God talks to. Yeah. That's, you know, that spiritual part of you. And once that part gets to going and you make that connection, yeah, man, you, you can't help but feel that pull. Might as well not even fight it. You can, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. I got, okay, here's a question. Like, I got a couple okay. of questions from people. Why do you think it's so many churches? Why do I think it's so many churches? <laughs> All right, I'm going to get in trouble for this, but hey, we out here now. So, uh, honestly, man, the reason I think there are so many churches, one, is because people have gotten upset with who they may have been following. Mm. Every church that's established is not necessarily a church that God ordained. Right. Scripture talks about uh, many are called, but few are chosen. Right, okay. Right. So those chosen few are those churches where you see that they're actually prospering. The people are out there doing the work. You can really see, uh, you know, you can really see God moving in those lives. Those called folk are for lack of a better term, those people who got into it because of money, because of fame, trying to get the platform or, you know, well, my pastor told me, no, I couldn't do this. So I, I think I can do it better. So I'm going to go out and do my own. So thing. nobody can stop nobody from opening the church. I mean, I could just get up tomorrow, go get a building, slap a cross on it, fire it up. Yeah, you can. Now, at the end of it, now you have to remember or you have to be aware that you are held accountable for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So definitely, you're, you're still going to be held accountable for what you do and how you lead people, even though God didn't tell you to do it. Right, you right. Thought it was a good business. I know, but decision. I'm yeah, but I'm saying like is like is no committee or nothing. That's what I'm saying. Like, no. cause it just be so many churches. I just be wondering like like I know everybody not okay in all these churches. No, you you can start a church tomorrow okay. if you wanted to. Cause I think it'll make more sense if we just built one mega church and then everybody in detroit just meet on what we're at but the, here's the problem who's gonna pastor that's when we have a board and we can probably rotate or something in theory that's a great idea yeah you know i've said to a couple of people instead of being two three churches small churches struggling yeah let's come together be one big church because i roll down finkel and it's just like it's 10 churches but all of them is barely standing up it's just like is in the Puritan Guinness Book too. of World Records for like having for more churches than I, some they, they got some next door to each other. Right. And the like, whole thing is, well, I think I can preach better than him. Yeah. Or I think I can preach better than her. Mm -hmm. And so nobody wants to take low because just because you're a preacher doesn't mean you're a pastor. Right, right. And so there's a difference and that's like, people don't get that difference. That's Kirk Franklin, right? He's just the... Kirk Preacher. Franklin is a minister. Yeah, he's he's a licensed minister. At oh, whatever okay. Church I thought he, he was just to. like a speaker, like you know, because no. a lot of people just speak. But it, so so that's what I be saying. Like with all these different churches, I think like that's why people don't want to go to church because we, you know, don't got time to be like filtering through who real and who not. Mm -hmm. So well, what you think we could do about something like that? One of the things I believe that really needs to happen is us us real preachers, those who've really been called by God. We have to get back to preaching and teaching the Bible. Right. Uh, get out of all of that prosperity stuff. Because people are driven to places where there's no accountability. But, I mean, it's, it's, don't you think that's kind of hard to do? Because you still need money for the church. But see, you do need money for the church. Yeah. But I can't tell you that if you give me your last... Thirty dollars, then you got a miracle coming tomorrow. But and they then do when that. that miracle does not come, 
you're looking at the preacher funny, oh, yeah. and you're looking at God funny. What I'm saying is that we have to go back to a place of having integrity where uh, everything is not about money. Money is important. Money is it's, vital. You yeah, have to have money gotta, to live. You got to keep the lights on. But and, and the reality is if you can't budget, why would God bless you with a million dollars? If you already don't pay your bills and you're not good with, with the hundred dollars right, you right, got, right. why would God give you a million? Mm. And then to add insult to injury, we tell people God's going to give you all this stuff, but your life is nowhere near God's principle. Right. You're, you're living in your kind of way. Yeah. You you saying any old kind of thing. You're doing any old kind of thing. That's just like giving your son good gifts. When you know your son is constantly acting I, up. I asked somebody on here. I was saying that's like vegans who drink liquor. Right. <laughs> like, it's like, like you, you, got to like you gotta pick and choose. But I think that's some of the stuff that push people away from church because it's like, okay, the pastor up there, you want my money for your prayer, but when you going through something, you want my money. But when I'm going through something, I get a prayer. So well, okay. You see what I'm saying? Like and and I mean I know like I I've been to churches where they need money, mm -hmm. so it ain't necessarily like going right to him or her. Right. You the first person I ever heard say that that actually gets it because I mean that's in the little church, but I'm talking about when you I start mean, talking about even in some of these big. And see what what we have to understand is that some of these mega guys we see the T D Jakes, the Edgar Vans, the Jamal Bryant's. Olsen, you know, that's my homeboy, but you know, he's still, Olsen, he's still you getting know, it. When we look at people like this, we have to realize that these guys have multiple streams of income. Yeah. But, you know, but, but, but. Everything but, ain't coming from the church. They got books. They do movies. I know, but that's my, that's my thing. So if Michael only got $30 and you just came out with a book and you just made $7 million, like, you don't need my 30 no more. You see what I'm saying? And it still be <laughs> like, they still be, you know, and I ain't pointing nobody out, but like, what's his name? Uh, Kenneth Copeland. Okay. You got a runway in the back of your house. Okay. But Kenneth Copeland been writing books since I was, but before I was Exactly. Born. So why would you get up there and still ask your folks for money? I, I'm saying that's just something that mm -hmm. scare people away from church because it's like you got a Rolls Royce and you still asking me for $10 out of What's my not, now here, here, Here's the thing. Okay. Excuse my squeakiness of my chair. Here's the thing. <laughs> when we get to taking care of the church mm -hmm. god sends the people to do that yeah you know so i need your 30 dollars. i need that other person's 30 dollars. i need this person's 30 dollars because giving is a principle right you know scripture says press down you know give and it shall be given unto you good measure press down shaking together yeah. running over shall men give unto your bosom so therefore if i sow into the kingdom mm -hmm. I'm going to reap, but God's going to send people to be a blessing unto me. Right. But here's the thing. A lot of the, what we have to do, especially in the church, is based off of faith. I sow my seeds in faith. Uh, if I asked you for $30, I said, the Lord says, sow a, sow a $30 seed. Mm. The Lord will tell you, yeah, I need you to sow that seed. He's going to tell me, right. Yeah, but if he don't confirm that to you. Then well, you're not responsible to sow that but the, seed. That's what I'm saying. So I, I'm just playing the other side. I okay, mean, I'm, I all, I'm all for it, but I'm going to just play the other side. Okay. That's what people be feeling like about church. Like, if I don't have no money, I can't go. It's like kind of like almost like an entry fee type situation. And that, that that's a misconception. I know, but I'm just saying what you got to say about something like so, that. So what, what I would tell people when you – I can only talk about my church, the church that I pastor right. at this point. Uh I tell people all the time, the area that we're in, man, we're in the hood. Yeah. You know, we got people who don't smell the best. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that that's come to our church. And I tell people, it's never about money because it's God's responsibility to take care of his church. Mm -hmm. It's our responsibility to preach to you the truth, to give you the truth. And then it's on you to make that decision. Right. I'm to push you to develop your own personal relationship. Right, right. Your relationship with God can't be based off of your pastor. Right. Because like if like your it pastor goes through died you. tomorrow, you, you know, what you going to do? You what have you to know it. You can't be based off of your pastor, your grandma, your daddy, your mama, how they raised you. No. But that's another thing. Like, a lot of people base that on how they was raised and where they was raised. So mm -hmm. what you what you would say about like, because we grew up in the project, so you okay. got a friend that's getting killed every single year. It's like, okay, what God at? Well, and then, so here's the thing. 
you're looking for God mm. when tragedy happens. But do you talk to God any other time? Right. You know, we, we can't we can't treat God like a jilted lover mm. that um, only reach <laughs> out to you right. <laughs> when I need something. I only talk to you when something's going wrong. Right, right. But when things are good in my life, first of all, I give you no credit. Right. I give you no glory. Mm. I give you no praise. I say, I got myself out of this. I did this. Yeah. All the while, it was God who did it. And set the things up for you. And set the things up for you and gave you the ability, the wherewithal, the knowledge, the know-how, the drive, the push mm. to do what you're doing. But we don't give God credit for that kind of stuff. Even, even that's what I'll be saying, like even the little stuff. Yeah, the little, you, like, you know what I'm saying? Waking just, up just waking up. You know what I'm saying? Taking the next breath. That's something to give God praise for, but we don't do that. That's why I said like uh it was a guy I was watching on YouTube, the guy say even an atheist call for God when he gets shot. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. that be the first thing come out of most people's mouth like, "Oh you my know, god." I I'd ra- they, they used to say I'd rather need him. I'd rather know him and not need him yeah. than to need him and not know. Him. And not, yeah. And that's that's real, although it's a good cliche, Mm -hmm. but it's real. And so we have to get to the point. And that's where the onus becomes uh, on on the pastors that are releasing preachers out uh, into the world to start ministries or churches or when preachers leave a church Mm -hmm. and they claim so and so is my pastor. That's where the pastors need to come in and instill the discipline and make sure they're taught and trained. Uh, the proper way okay. as a pastor I got a pastor right okay that's what I'm saying so somebody can so so you got your church I start coming to your church you can say okay Michael you ready now yeah to go if, if, if I see it and God has spoken to me now I ain't gonna tell you hey man it's time for you to go and God ain't told me you right, need right. to release him right but when God has said yeah you know it, it, it's his you time do he's that? ready hmm. you ever done it I haven't done that yet okay. there are some okay. that are coming up up under me that I believe at the appropriate time, God's going to do something with them. Okay. But right now, they're still in training. They're, okay. they're still in the process of being molded. And that's what happens with a lot of preachers who just jump the gun. They don't like to wait. They don't like that molding oh, process because that's the part of the process that hurts. I, and I think that's what it, I think sometimes with that, it'd be the pressure of the other pastors and the popularity stuff. You think that play a part in it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, because, absolutely. I mean, I think uh, that's I think that's really like I say like us, but like me. I'm mm-hmm. just say me. Before I even got off into church and going to church and just really being into the God and everything. Right. That was the number one hold up. Like I'm gonna do all this for nothing. And it's just like what you would say to somebody that's on the fence about something like that. Saying that what they're doing all this church. No, no, stuff no. Like nothing. I don't want to. I, I'm living my life and I'm mm-hmm. I'm making it. I'm, now, if I start dedicating my life to God and to the church, mm-hmm. what if don't nothing change? Things change based on your perception. Your perception yeah. equals your reality. Mm-hmm. So if my view of God change, mm-hmm. my service to God changes, then my life has to change. Mm-hmm. Now, here's what they don't tell us in the pamphlet, in the brochure, in the fine print. Mm -hmm. that just because you're saved, you're exempt from problems. Right. And that's what people look to church to be, that quick fix where, oh, I started coming to church, now I ain't going to have no more problems, I ain't going to never cry, I I ain't going to never get sick. (laughs) You know, no, that's that's not a Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. cure-all. At the end of the day, it gives you a God to go to who's going to hear your prayer. It helps you to develop that relationship because... Getting saved, coming to church, learning how to live as a Christian is a process. Right. Uh, you know, when you started your job, you didn't come in off the street knowing mm-hmm. how to do the no, job. Do it right, Somebody right. had to teach you. Mm-hmm. Somebody had to train you. And the more you went every day, the more you paid attention, next thing you know, you became the next person to train somebody else. Right. And that's how it is in church. No, you're not going to get it right right off the bat. But it's a process. Yeah. So the more you keep working it, the more you yeah. keep working at it, you'll start noticing there's things about you that you may have done last year. Yeah. You don't do it now. Yeah. And I you mean, can attribute it's, it's, all it's, of that to getting closer to God, yeah. to your relationship being strengthened and deepened. And that's how it works. And that's yeah. what I would tell the person but, on the fence. Okay. Give God a chance. But okay, now that's the God part. Mm-hmm. Let's get back to the to the church part. Okay. It's a lot of people scared of church people, like church folk. 
<laughs> I'm saying like the whole dress code and the, in the, in the, in the I don't want to be like, you know, you've been coming it. here for 10 years and then here I come walking in my first day. Mm -hmm. That really, you know yeah. what I'm saying? That mm -hmm. keep a lot of people out because like I ain't got no suit. You know, a lot of people think right. that. You're absolutely right. And it does happen. And I think that's where the responsibility of church leaders mm -hmm. comes into play. We have to remember this isn't our grandmother's generation. Right. So we have to make sure to become culturally appropriate mm -hmm. where we're not losing our message. We're just changing our method. Right, to, to reach to reach those that need to hear the message. Mm -hmm. You might come to my church on some Sundays, man. Everybody else got on suits. I'm in t-shirt and jeans. I, and that's, I mean, but I think also it, it takes people coming out to go get them. I mean, I know, yeah. you know, maybe just set up one day at Ridge Park and say, we're going to just do this regular like this, get some speakers or something. I want to do in my church, and I've talked to my leaders about it, I want to do what's called church on the corner. Yeah. Where we come outside with the loudspeaker, the microphone, and we, we preaching to the people that's walking by. We preaching to the mm -hmm. cars that's passing by. And if you stop, we, we're going to share a little word with you. We're going to invite you to our church, and we're going to keep it And we'll go from there. Every fourth Saturday at our church, we have what's called SOS. It's called Sharing Our Savior, mm. uh, where we give people food. We give them a hot sandwich. We get them a sandwich in a soup and we give them a little bag of food to take with them because honestly, if I can't meet your immediate need, yeah, you're not even going to listen to me talk about your spiritual that, need. Yeah, that's what I'll be saying. That's the number one thing. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, all of us is pretty selfish when it comes to God because most of us pray for stuff for ourselves. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I'll be saying when you point to a pastor and say, okay, I'm finna come to your church. What you about to do for me? Like, that you know you gotta have that you got to have balance and see you have to be real but here's the here's the caveat to it as well uh we'll we'll use you you have to come in being honest yeah you Food know you, you really have to come in with that mindset i want to learn i want to see i want it and i want to be know. here right. i want that relationship i, I don't want to get caught up in the attitude of how they say church is you know, how it used to be the, mm. the preacher's a pimp and he's sleeping with all the women. Or it'd be too no. churchy. Right. Too church. We going to change that mentality yeah. because I believe it's mm. not about the building. Mm. And that's where we get hung up. Um, you know, you talked about church folk and, you know, people talk about church hurt. And scripture says we're the church as individuals. Right. The building is just our gathering place. Mm. And I tell people it's not the church that hurts you. It was individuals who go to church yeah. that hurt you, that right. offended you, that you may not have gone yeah, to them to look. get it straight yeah. or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. So then you judge every other gathering of believers based off of the people that hurt you that you never went to to mm -hmm. say, hey, you offended me. Right. Because if I don't know I upset you. It probably wasn't, it probably wasn't on purpose. It wasn't on purpose. I mean, I, that's what I say. Like when we, when I started like going to church for real, it's like he said for real. <laughs> you know, because like you know, we all dabble like Easter, uh -huh. you know, Christmas, whatever. Right. But like I, like I try to go more. Like, I say that, but like that be the thing. Like I come in, I ain't got no suit on. I got my jogger pants on. I got my t-shirt on. Mm -hmm. Like it might be somebody look back at me, and I remember in my head like, what is this old lady like? You know what I'm saying? Like, like you want to smoke? <laughs> like, and it feel it feel like a dirty look. So I'm okay. saying like that's where I think, you know, I mean, my thing is like if you talk to people, it'd be like you tell them you going to church even on Easter, they'd be like, man, I ain't got no suit. Like I think we that's something we gotta attack, like full on. I dress down for Easter at my church. I mean, but even like you might dress down, but I think it need to be like all y'all dressed down. Like, well, a lot of see, see here's the thing, we're battling church tradition. Right. And we have yeah, that's the fight right there. a lot of older people who have been in church, uh, you know, as long as we've been born and longer. Mm -hmm. And for some of them, it's hard for them to change what they what do. they what they know as absolute. So this right. is this has become their doctrine. This is this is it. This is how you're supposed to dress when you come to church. Period. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Or you cool. disobeying. Right. And I, I, I ain't gonna get mad at you for that, but this ain't that day. 
And right. that's why many churches cease to be effective because they're trying to minister to this day mm. based on 20 years ago. Right. And you can't do that. This is a totally different group of it's people. It's a whole different thing. And they and I think they worse off. I mean, this, this generation is you terrible, have a generation, man. generation, this generation, man, uh honestly, they wasn't raised in church. They were or they they, they wasn't even made that's to what go I say, to church. Mama, the son 15, the mama 30, the, right. the, the, the grandma. So 41. our approach has to change. Yeah. And so if I'm upset that you ain't got no suit when you come to my church, then either I'm going to go buy you a suit or I'm going to shut up. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, hey, if that's all you got, then make sure that, you know, if your jogging suit is what you got, then man, make sure you keep that jogging suit clean. Keep it, keep it so, together. so when you come to church, because God knows I'm bringing my very best, and this is my best Nike jogging suit, and I'm going to rock it This is all I got. This is what I got. Yeah. And here's the thing. Again, the more you're in, and the more you start to learn, yeah. The more your mindset change, mm -hmm. the more you begin to grow. And, you know, somebody may say, hey, I'm going to take you in by your, you know, you don't, you might not be a suit guy. Yeah. You might say, but, you know, I'll, I'll do business casual. But I ain't putting on no suit. Cool. I got, I'll go one, buy I got you one suit. I, I put a whole suit you know, on first time in my life. I went to my boy wedding like two, three years ago. I mean, I'm saying, I, you know, my when my mother got her suits, I don't mm -hmm. count that before 10. You really can't right. count that. You found when you was buying them for yourself. When I bought, that's the first suit I ever bought for myself. So. Janetta said, what about the people who want to dress up, though? That's what I'm saying. Like You can do that. And see, here's, here's the thing. Uh, Janetta, if you're listening, uh, here's the reality. We have to make church fit everybody. We have to cook for the whole house. I'm saying, no, this is what I'm saying. Like, the people that want to dress up, let them dress up. No, I'm saying like to, to make it more comfortable, take one for the team. And I know you got something at the house, the jeans and the t-shirt. Put that on Sunday. We're inviting these boys over here. I do. You see uh, what I'm saying? I do every third Sunday as a dress now Sunday at my church. But do people still dress up though? Some do because that's just in that's their just, nature. That's just what they do. And yeah. so that, that's, that's what we have to get. There's some stuff that's just embedded in their nature. Yeah. But it's out there. You don't have to. Right, you can if you want, but I'm telling you, but from, you don't have from, to. from from a point of view of somebody who was easing in the church. Mm -hmm. You say that I believe you. Then as soon as I open the door, I see the hat. I'm like, you know what I'm saying? I got like, a dude that comes to church every week. Hmm? Hat, hoodie, jeans or sweatpants. Hmm? Sits over on the side, but every time I get up to preach, he the loudest one. Yeah. I mean, it's all in you, though, but I'm just saying, like, that's once you get in there. My thing is, like, I just think we got to do something about getting them in there because... That that hinges on the people that are tasked with the response. And I just talked about this in my Bible study mm. um, of how we have to make sure that as we're going out to witness to people, that we're meeting people where they are. Mm -hmm. And that's really what I think kind of pushes your generation back because mm -hmm. when people from the church come out to witness, you know, yeah. they're damning them or they're sending them to hell or they spouting out 20 scriptures. You ain't even got no Bible. So I ain't expecting you to know that. So let me talk to that's you. What, that's another thing, too. That's based on where you are and yeah. be like, hey, man, well, you know, if I was a slanger back in the day, hey, dog, let me tell you, man, that's I used right. to do that. And I'm, I'm going to tell you what happened to me. And what and made how, me turn the corner. Right, what made me turn the corner, bend the, you know, turn the page. And these are the types of things yeah. that, you know, this generation needs to see. I tell people all the time, man, church is the only place where people play the greatest game of dress up. Yeah. Because nobody wants no one else to know they've ever been hurt. Oh, they've yeah. ever cried. They've lied. And that's lied how it looked, though. Like, you go almost, it, it kind of looked like that. Like, you know, they, they got on their suits. They got it together. You got on your jeans. You and don't. And sometimes it'd be the complete opposite. They some of these people, man, are barely holding on by a thread. Yeah. And if you talk to them, you'll find, you'll out. find out. And so we have to get rid of this this air. Yeah. And, That's what I'm saying. Know, we gotta tighten it. We gotta close that. We gotta close that notion. gap. Yeah. But see, at the same time, while the church needs to come out, hmm. those out need to be willing to listen. Yeah, yeah. Don't just shut us down because we come from the church. Mm -hmm. You know, hear what we got to say. You want us to listen to you, mm -hmm. but you got to listen to us. That's what I'm saying. So I it think has to I, be a dialogue. I think I, I really believe that the outfit mm -hmm. can be what breaks it. Like, I really believe that because if you show up in your suit and your tie like this man out here on this doorstep. Man. But, if, but if you come in dressed like that, it's mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm going to listen to what he got to say because he looked more I've, like I've me. I've surprised people. Yeah. Come to visit my church. I'm standing at the door greeting 
They had no clue who I was. Mm-hmm. I'm just greeting them as they come in. Hey, how you doing? Good morning. God bless you. Thank you for visiting. Blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Then when it's time for the preacher to get up, it was like, oh, it's the same guy. That was opening the door. That was opening the door, talking yeah. to us. And he ain't went and changed. He had on jeans when he came in. Yeah, he's still, and yeah. I still got them on. Yeah. I preached in a t-shirt on Sunday. Yeah. I mean, I'm just of the persuasion, man, that honestly, we have to do a little bit more. Yeah. We have to be willing to on be both flexible. sides. On both sides, we have yeah. to be flexible. On both sides, because at the end of the day, I don't care how many scriptures you know, if you are not living according to godly principle, mm. at the end of the day, when you die and you stand before judgment, you still have to give an account for everything you've done. Right. Period. Mm-hmm. And so I'd rather know that I, I I'll feel better knowing that I've preached to you the truth. Mm. That I've done the best I can to live the kind of life that models what I'm preaching. Yeah. And that, that I was your friend. I was your brother. I helped crucial. you when I could. And when God judges you, mm. at least we can say, you know, I had it right and I chose to do something else. Yeah. I hate I hate for you to go to hell through the church. Man. If you're gonna go to hell, I'm saying that's one of the scary the that's one of the scariest things though. Like I'm gonna go through all of this and He's still like it's some people out here done did some terrible stuff. Right. But see, that's where repentance comes in. And that's where proper teaching and understanding mm-hmm. of who God is and how God works and how he deals with us on a personal level. That's why I always go back to that personal relationship. Oh. That's what's going to be clutch for you. Yeah, because that's why I be saying I'll be mm-hmm. like, I'll be when I go to church sometimes, but oh, real quick, this is Michelle House say uh what church you from again? I'm from Samaritan Baptist Church on the east side of Detroit, 8806 Mac Avenue. Okay, sweet. But look, this is what I be doing. Like when I go to church, sometimes I go to church and he, and they be up there preaching and they don't be talking about something that's touching me. So I, you know, like, and that's another thing I want to put out there too, like the whole Bible thing. Like okay. when a pastor be like, okay, turn to this. Mm-hmm. We feel bad. As soon as y'all say that, because it's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. It, it's going to take me 20 minutes to find it. Okay. But I got my phone Bible, so I'm right on it, like quick right. as y'all. But right. what I'm saying is like, that's what I be, I, I would say that to somebody. If you go to church and he's not talking about what you're talking about, like sometimes I go to church and I just read my own thing. I don't even hear what y'all up there talking about because I be in my own world because I know what I'm going through and what I want for mm-hmm. my life. So this message might not be for me. Okay. But I'm still here. I'm still here. Right? And that, but I'm saying, like, that's one of the things that I think, you know, you want to widen it up so you can reach everybody. Mm-hmm. But I think we need to have, like, specific church things. Like, we only, these people come. If if you haven't, you ain't been baptized or nothing, come to church this day. And we'll have, like, a message just for y'all. Mm-hmm. So people won't get lost. And we'll have, like, a you know, we're going to turn to this page and we and say it. We're going to give y'all time to find it because I know you don't know your Bible. Because when y'all say turn to such and such, I remember like, man. <laughs> but you know what? The more you study your Bible on your own, the more versed you become with where scriptures are, where certain books are. And like I said, it goes back to the beginning when we were talking about things being the process. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't expect to come in uh, on day one and be where somebody is that's been here for 30 years. Mm-hmm. It's a process. You got to grow to that point, and we have to allow you to grow to that point. Now, another thing you was talking about is what the preacher is preaching. That's why Bible studies in those teaching moments, mm-hmm. Bible studies, Sunday school, or whatever outside of, you know, outside of a Sunday morning service mm-hmm. is offered for a teaching setting. That's where those things become uh, more important Right. Because now this is where you can stop and ask questions. This is where you can say, hey, wait a minute, I don't understand that. Can you break that down a little bit more? Because when I'm up preaching on a Sunday, you can't stop me and ask me a question. Right. Because I'm I'm in my flow. I'm in my That's what I was saying. That's why we need and like so, a, a, a little side where. And see, that's also where when you have other preachers that are in that church or the deacons in that church, you can pull them to the side and say, hey, listen, I need some more help with understanding A, B, and C. Right, and then they can take that time with you and say, "Okay, when you want to get together, let let's sit down, and I'll sit down with you, and I'll walk through it with you." Yeah. But we have to be—you have to be willing to say, "I don't know, but I want to know." But I want to know. That's the thing. So, what what you think about like like Facebook Live Bible studies? 
I think they're great. I think no, I'm saying you'll do something like that. Yeah, I have done stuff. Like oh, okay, that's what I'm saying because yeah. I think, you know, the words in the Bible sometimes people just don't get them. Like mm-hmm. in how the story lays out, mm-hmm. you will you'll lose somebody quick, and okay. they like okay, he might be talking about a, he might say something about a, a goat or a donkey going up the hill. With mm-hmm. with what's, what's the story? I don't know the Bible, but who was it? It, it, it depends on which one you talk about because there's a lot of those stories where the, the goat got caught in the fence or something. Oh, you're talking about when the donkey got caught in the fence and he told him, he say, how you know you coming back down? He say, mm-hmm. y'all stay here, I'll be back. He say, how so you... you're talking about when Abraham was going to sacrifice his son. For his Isaac. son. And he was like, why and are you taking your son? was the ram in the bush. I was confused. Right. I had to read that like 20 times mm-hmm. before I was really like, oh, okay. This ain't got nothing to do with the donkey or yeah, whatever. It, it, it was a ram. It, it was, it was a ram. ram. And it had nothing to do with the ram. I thought the it ram had... played a part. It played no part. No. The ra- no, you're actually right. The ram didn't play a part. The the basis of that story, mm. I'm, I'm gonna give you the short. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, I'm, I'm, break I'm, it down, break it down, short break it down. Short version. <laughs> the basis of that story was to for uh, Abraham to prove how much he loved God and his faith and his faith. Yeah. And so because um, he was going up there to sacrifice his son Isaac, a right? sacrifice. Yeah, he's going because God told him to sacrifice him. Right now, watch this. He was going up there. Uh, Isaac's name means laughter. Mm. So God was telling him, sacrifice to me that thing that makes you happy. Mm. And so when he got up there, now his son, if you, when you read the story, as you've read it, yeah. you notice his son kept asking, where's the sacrifice? Where's the sacrifice? Why, why are you telling me to come up there? But watch what Abraham kept right. telling him, though. Abraham kept saying to him, God will provide for himself. Mm. So when they get up there, he lays him on the altar, pulls up the knife. And the fire. And, all and then God says, stay your hand. Mm. He said, because now I see that there's nothing that you'll withhold from me. Mm. But because he still required the sacrifice, yeah. he said, listen, there's a ram in the bush. It's caught in the thickens. Yeah. Go get him. And that's who you sacrifice. Yeah. But the whole time, Abraham's faith was, was in what he knew about God. Right. And he knew and he trusted God. Hey, no matter what you're asking me for, mm. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. Even my son. Even my son. Right. I, I'll give it to you yeah. because I trust you. Mm. And I know you're not going to ask me for anything that's going to cause me to hate you. That's going to really any pain cause me to be hurting. No, he's not going to do that to you. But I'm saying, look, okay. Mm-hmm. That's one of those stories you got to break down to people who don't know nothing. Exactly. Like, I know, I, but I I'm saying it. like. I think sometimes that's where people get scared at because on Sunday mm-hmm. you will shoot through that and you ain't got time to stop and tell Mike Wade this ain't got nothing to do with this Ram. While I'm over here stuck on this Ram situation. But watch this though. If if I'm an attentive preacher, mm-hmm. then I do have to deal with that Ram. Right then. Because I have to make sure that this uh, biblical historical account mm-hmm. is relevant to your everyday life. Right. So I need to pull you in and show you how to put yourself in this place. So no, it may not be your son he's asking for. Mm. It, it may be something else that has more of your attention mm. uh, and that time that you should be giving to him. And so yeah, and when I'm up preaching, yeah, mm. I have to make it a point to, 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 to unpack every, all of that right, right. And, and give it to you. And so that's why preaching has to be simple. You ain't coming to hear me spout off uh, all these wonderful theological terms that I don't went to school to learn. Th- that, no, that's what I'm saying. I think that's where people get lost. I mean, that's mm-hmm. where I don't want to say dumb the Bible down, but like it's well, almost it's, it's like not dumbing it down, but it's making it simplistic. But you got to because yeah. you have to know your audience. Period. Yeah. Uh, let, let's take the preaching out of it. If you was going to do a speech at a middle school, mm-hmm. you would talk to the middle schoolers. Yeah. Different than you would talk to high schoolers in college, yeah, and college mm-hmm. kids mm-hmm. because it's all about knowing your audience. But I'm saying that that's, that's what that got to be is. hard. That got to be hard for a pastor because you got to mix bag every, every week. Every week you got to mix week. bag, that's and that's why I think we got to unmix the bag. That's what I'm asking. Well, you for. can't really unmix the bag. I'm saying yeah, you can because you because can, when, when you no, you can't because you can say Thursday, uh-huh. y'all come. Now that that those are teaching moments, but we're talking about right, right. a Sunday morning gathering. Yeah, yeah. Now we can have different teaching moments mm. for different groups. I'm with that. Yeah. But on a Sunday morning, oh Sunday is the mix. We got to cook yeah. for the whole house. Yeah, yeah. And so that's why our preaching has to be of such. 
Yeah. That everybody, I mean, I'm saying, no matter their yeah. level, yeah. can get something from it and understand where you're going. Sunday, I preached a message uh, entitled uh, Satisfied Disappointment. Mm. I preached a message Satisfied Disappointment. And in that message, uh, we talked about how there are times where you've asked God for things mm. and it seemed like he was ignoring you. Yeah, that was disappointing. That still happened now. I still, I still go. I still go through that every now. day. Yeah, but when God does respond, sometimes He responds and never addressed your issue, mm. but He's addressing your life. All right, and that, that's your satisfaction because that, at least He responded to you. Yeah. And so, and it's it's taking the time to make sure people understand that because we're all going through the same thing, or regardless yeah, some. of our position, our title, irregardless of to how long we've been saved. Uh, you got saved last week. I've been saved twenty years. I cry just like you cry. But that's what I'm saying. Like people, that's what we got to get. I think that message need to get out is like we 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 all got work to do. Like I'm Constantly. no closer than you. You no closer than him. We all Constantly. walk in that way. Constantly. And it's just like some people, like I say, some people done did worse than what we done in life. And mm -hmm. there's people done worse than them. Them people that's way down there, they like, man, it's no reason. And that that's just it. We have to show them that there's still hope. Right. That's what I'm saying. And like we, we gotta go to that. Even when they give up on themselves, we can't give up on them. And we have to be willing to show them, man, you can still come back from this. And be willing to not only tell them that, but be willing to walk with them. Yeah, that, that's to be the main willing thing. to help them. But then you got to give still... them the resources that they need to get on their feet or to do better. Mm -hmm. Church is supposed to be a spiritual hospital, right? Where you're coming in sick, you're coming in wounded, broken, whatever the case may be. Uh, just because you were sick one day, and you went to the doctor. That doesn't fix the problem. Yeah. But you got to keep going so that, that one immune system yeah. can build up, and then. He's giving you different treatments and different medications to see what works for you to help you become stronger. And so that's how church does for us. And having a good pastor, whether it's male or female, having somebody that really loves you, that's really been called by God, who they're going to call you out on your mess. That's one. That was a thing I used to think about, too, back in the day. Like, I didn't really trust female pastors. Why? I don't know. I mean, I'm over it now, but I'm just saying, like. You know, I, I remember, like, it, this is just stuff that I remember, like, in my head. Like, I'd be watching TV and be like, man, what is she doing? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just just, just something. Well, he, this right here say, this Pat say, he think Christianity was pushed on our ancestors by the slaveholders to control us. Would you? I believe the slaveholders misrepresented yeah. what the scriptures were about. Mm -hmm. And because we, we wasn't able to read our... Well, and I don't think all of our ancestors were ignorant uh, because we had some of our ancestors that sold us. But that's that's a whole nother conversation. Um, it was pushed uh, on us by those slave masters as a form of control because they knew we didn't know the truth. Right. Uh, the Book of Eli. I, I love that, that that movie because one of the things that the uh, villain in that movie said, if we can get this book... It's a weapon. It's a weapon. It's a weapon. Because we can control the people with it. And that's what people have to realize. When you live according to godly principle and you know the word for yourself, mm -hmm. there is nothing that you can't do yeah. uh, when you're doing it according to God's principles and your heart, your mind, and your motives are right. right. And so I can't keep getting, I can't stay stuck on what they did only thing I can do now is work to change the narrative. Right, of what will happen. Of what happened. That's why right. I'll be saying, like, you uh, you got to put yourself in a position to be blessed. Exactly. And so... I remember a guy said at a seminar, he asked everybody about playing the lottery and what they mm -hmm. do with the Mega Millions. And then he was like, so who actually played? And, like, he told everybody, raise their hand if you know what you'll do. Then he was like, who played? Everybody put their hand out. So, like, three people, he said, quit looking for blessings you're never going to get. <laughs> like you know, sitting that, around that, wishing and thinking doesn't do anything. Don't do nothing for nobody. You have to do the work. Yeah. You know, and if you're gonna sit and buy lottery tickets, you know, three, four times a day, seven mm -hmm. days a week, that same investment you're putting in that, mm -hmm. why not take that same money 
man. And put it up. I'm trying to, man. And get you an IRA. Or I'm feeling like my nephew. A nah, money market. I played the lottery. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but and see, no, but I'm saying, I'm saying, like, but that's how people be at church, though. Like, if you preaching that, and I'm sitting out there, it'd be like, man. Jeanette, I told this man all my business. Like I'm saying, but like you know what I'm saying, but like how I'm saying, like that's the stuff that scare people off sometimes. And see, a lot of people don't like being confronted with the truth of their own reality. That's numero. You know, that's numero uh, uno. People like to be in places where there's really no accountability, where they can kind of do what they want to do. Hmm. And it's not that. And I'm speaking for all pastors. Well. I'm speaking for some pastors. I can't mm. speak for all of them. I'm speaking for some pastors. It's not that somebody told us your business. Yeah. It's that we spent time in study. We spent time in prayer. And the Lord said, no, this is what I want you to give my people on Sunday. Right. And so he probably told you to talk to me. You, you see I, what I'm, I'm saying? I'm just preaching a message. Right, right. And I've had people come up to me like, Pastor, how did you know what I was going through? To, I didn't. That's why I say the lady. She you ain't up. called me. You ain't said nothing. The lady to me. walked up to me, man. She said, "You all right, baby?" Mm. <laughs> and my sister there, and I'm. I don't know what I'm crying for. I'm just like, when I got done, I was like, "All right, let me." Yeah. Uh, it just seemed like okay after you let that out, and that's what I be telling people who don't go to church. Like, once you let that out, mm -hmm. you almost see where you got to go. Yeah. You know, after that, like after you get over that initial hump, like. It, it, it becomes a whole lot clearer. It, 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 yeah. And then the, the more you go, the clearer it gets. Because what people don't get, I'll say this, is that the, the, the we, we say the enemy, but the devil only fights you. Mm -hmm. Not because of you. He fights you because he don't like God. And right. his whole goal is to keep as many as he can yeah. from turning over their life, from oh, deciding to give their life, and those who done gay, they like getting them to come back out. Man. That's his whole goal because he know. wants to fight God. Mm -hmm. And you are just the conduit that he uses to bring God sorrow. Right. And that, that's what I say. Like, when you doing bad, man, like, you know, they don't, he don't mess with you then. But as yeah. soon as you say, you know what, man, I'm finna change. That's something. when all hell in your life break loose. Man. You lose your job. Your car break down. You can't, you know. When people you people decide, won't even you talk to you no right. more. Right, when you, you decide you're going to do right. Because everybody love you when you're a mess. Yeah. Because you're easily you're easy to be used. You're easy to be manipulated. Or you under them. You, Right. It's 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 a form of oppression. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you make up any... Martin Luther King said it like this. Nobody can ride your back when you stand up. They can only ride you when you're bent over. When you're bent over. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And so that's that's the reality. Of okay, that. let me get to this. So what, <laughs> what, 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 um... What 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 style would you say you're, you're preaching? Like, who would you say that you kind of, that you... Oh, man. Because I want to ask you, I got some people that I want to know what you think about them, but you answer <laughs> that first, though. <laughs> oh, this is probably about, to, probably about to get me in trouble. No, no. Uh, I, I, I hope not. I would say my, my preaching style, mm -hmm. um, I, t I crack jokes and tell stories. Right. You know, I'm, I guess you can consider, you know, I guess charismatic, but I have a traditional new age type of yeah. approach. So when you look at preachers like um, Jamal Bryant, I've been, I've, you know, I'm not on that platform, but as far as um, the approach to scripture and the approach to how you minister to people, mm. uh, kind of on that type of basis where uh, I'm not stuck in the tradition of church. Right, right. Cause I think I really think we gotta. I really think we gotta like kind of shake that. Not too much because you still gotta hold on to the church, but you gotta let a little of it go to get them extra people in the you, back you to at least come a little closer. Yeah. Because you ain't gotta come all the way in the church. That's what I be. You know, that'd be my message to people who like watch it on TV first. Start there. Yeah. YouTube at first. I, I, and we're on YouTube. My church is on YouTube. Y'all so. go live. Or you, oh, y'all, well, they'll record post. it okay. and then they'll post it like the next day or two. Okay, that's but sweet. our church is on YouTube. Let me, let me, let me, first of all, I'll, not him though. He's gonna go last. But <laughs> what you think of these fellas? Now, first of all, let me say this I I like Deetra Cat. Like the rest mm -hmm. of them cats, I wasn't really feeling them. You ever watched the show? I did, I have. Okay, I, have. I end up liking Deetra Cat because, mm -hmm. for, and I'll tell you this, I'll tell you why. Because he's a bit of a dirtbag. <laughs> 
So <laughs> that let me know if he can if he can hit that corner, we all can hit it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important. Like those are ex gang bangers, and that's one thing that I like they about the show. But the money part, I'm kind of like, okay, you got a Rolls Royce, man. Dietrich was a recording artist. I, he no, is a recording. I know, artist. but like all of them, like you saw how they was living. Well, okay, but that's the, that, that's to, part of the issue. Well, some of these people I can speak to. Mm -hmm. um, Noel Jones, uh, again, preacher, author, uh, does a lot of other stuff, has other business ventures. And see, people, they can't just look at, oh, he's a pastor and he has all of this. Mm -hmm. What else does this man have going on? Yeah. What, what else does he have behind the scenes yeah. that you know nothing about that contributes to his income? Now, he's a full-time pastor, pastors of mega church, thousands of members. Yeah. He gets a salary. I can't tell this man how to spend his money once we give it to him. I know. And that's the problem that church people have. Oh, once we've paid him, uh, or one, we, we pay his salary. Okay, you do, but you can't tell me what to do but, with my but, money. But I'm saying, but that's that's the conversation I think people be missing. I ain't going to say we don't have it. I think they just miss it. They, they, they you, miss you, it on you purpose. Give, you, you pay they his salary for him to preach. That's his job. And he so he has to live. You're not paying that. him to bless you with nothing. That's exactly. on you. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like that's the conversation. Like, and so you, you don't know what this man's faith is. You don't know what kind of deal he got. But I mean, let me put this back up here because I don't um, know. I don't know all their names. But uh, we got Bishop Clarence McClendon, uh, uh, the light skinned pretty guy in the back. In the back, Bishop okay. McClendon. Uh, again, I like this cat too. The the the, the ex gang banger. What's uh, his name? Bishop Ron Gibson. Okay, um, that's with the with the link you know, from the mob squad, right? And so <laughs> these guys, man, have other stuff going yeah. on, and then their preaching uh, has afforded them the opportunity to not just preach at their church, mm -hmm. but they've become national evangelists. Right. Okay, that's another thing too. Like, why I got to give you twenty grand to come preach at my church? I ain't got nothing to do with that. Okay, <laughs> I got nothing. But at the same time, you, I mean, I, I, I'll, I'll say this. I'll say this. There are some names that draw. Mm -hmm. Right, you know, right. People yeah, gonna come. Yeah. That's that's like anything. just because they in the building. And mm -hmm. so, uh, I, I I don't I don't see nothing wrong with it. I wouldn't ask for twenty thousand. That ain't what the Lord told me to do. Right. But if that's what you believe you're worth, they say they gave Kanye three hundred grand. Hey. To come to, to come to church, man. Like, look, bro. If that's what you believe you worth, then, then and they feel that. like they, I say, yeah, if you give it, it to me, I'm gonna take it. Right. So, but at the end of the day, my question is: once we pay out all of this, mm -hmm. what do we have left? Yeah, that, that's now, what I'm it's saying. It's like, one it, thing to say, okay, my my fee is twenty grand to come in, okay, and when you leave, I only got a hundred dollars left. Then no nah, man, that that ain't that ain't cool. That ain't the move. But yeah, that's that what that's move. what I'm saying. That's what make people think it's kind of money game because you got YouTube, you got I, uh, Apple, mm -hmm. you can load all that on there and you will get paid. You, you can, but you'll probably make that three hundred grand back. That's what make people think it's a money game. But you got that three hundred grand for Kanye, but my lights off. And so here's my question: If your lights are off. Mm -hmm. Then why are you giving money to that? No, I'm saying even if even if, I'm saying even if I don't have it. No, I'm talking about okay. like as a pastor. I've been coming here. I've been giving you money when I had it. Mm -hmm. Now I don't hit the ground. Mm -hmm. Now my lights off, and here you is forking over three hundred grand to Kanye. Like that's, but did did you? And he, so, uh, so my question to that person would be, Matt, did you talk to the church to let them know, mm -hmm. hey, this is my situation. You right, know, I've right. been giving. I've been tithing. I've been coming, and I've I've fallen on hard times. Mm -hmm. You know, can you help me? And if you are a legitimate member, right, who's tithing, who's giving, <clears throat> your church nine times out of ten is going to help you. Right, right. But I'm just saying, but you do understand how somebody could, could get offended by. I understand how it right. looks, but that's the narrative for people on the outside who's never coming in to actually ask. Now, if you're a member of my church, you have a right to see. Our finances. Right. You have a right to say, hey, I want to see the books. We're going to open it up to let you see who got what, when we paid who. Oh, yeah. But see, What's that's this? too much work. That's too much accountability. See, we want to complain, but we don't want to contribute. Right, right. Or or go in there and actually sit down and look at the book. Right. And that's right. where the onus comes in. My thing is no contribution, no complaint. 
Don't keep complaining about what we're not doing, and you're not gonna come in here and help us do what you what complain and we not doing. Right, right. You fussing and about some people, some people, we wanted like some people ain't been to church all year, and yeah. they want to come Sunday and get blessed. Yeah, and right. And there. so and, and that, that's that, the thing. Uh-oh, I don't got caught up. You coming to do that? You ain't been in here all year. Right. You come on Sunday. You want to be a blessing. So now you're trying to treat God like a prostitute. Right, and you try to, yeah, and that's the part. You, you show up for what you have. want, you're going to give a little money. Who you do that to? Right. You do that to prostitutes. You do that, yeah, for that. Let me, let me, let me get in here. So what about this, this cat? This funny cat, too. Benny Hinn with the jacket. <laughs> like, my thing about him is, man, like, about preachers like this. Did you see the guy, uh, I, I, it was another guy, I don't know if it was still him, but he was, like, throwing his hand and, like, the whole front row was, like, falling out. Um. I will say, Benny Hinn, um, I was skeptical. Him and uh, uh, Peter Popoff. When I was 16. That guy, man. I went to a Benny Hinn crusade at Michigan State University. Hmm. I thought, no lie, <laughs> that this dude was fake as a $3 bill. Man. But in that worship experience, hmm. I actually felt and I'm up in, in the top. In the top, I'm up there. But, but I'm, I, I actually felt the preaching the part is cool. He he talked. No, he did what he do with the and jacket. I felt it. <laughs> I felt. It. I have to God, be there. God does move on people that way. Yeah. Um, did you but see the I video can't though? Speak about a person if I've never been in there. That's service. what I said. I've never been. Yeah, in but front I've of. been in the Benny Hinn service, right? And so I can attest to that because okay. I experienced. Because he up there like. And they just like, come on! You saw the video, right? Yeah, where he was just that, like, yeah. I'm sitting there watching I've ex- the because TV, I've and I'm like, come it, on, dude. I can say, you know, for me, yeah, he's authentic. Yeah, he's real. I can't mm-hmm. speak for the other guys. I wasn't there. What's his name? Uh, oh man, I forgot his name. The dude, the David Taylor. Is that his name? I've, I've heard of David. David did, Taylor. Did you, I'll, did you, matter of fact, he's in Taylor. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah, he from. <laughs> did you? He, they did the deposition. Like he was like going. Through that money, like he getting limos and, and get he bought a car and cut the car to a limo. And see, when we can't, and these are the types of things that becomes a black eye to the kingdom when right. we can't really adequately give an account. And so we're all judged based off of what one or two people have done. And that's the bad part. Of, that's why and I don't know how y'all do it. That 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 is the bad part. So mm-hmm. I can't speak to. You know anything personal with him because I don't know him, but based on what we saw in the deposition, in that deposition, I watched that was the whole on thing on YouTube and stuff like that. I think he should have done better with being more accountable with how he handled God's people. Yeah, he said he said he need a new Versace suit and all that, like because he sweat like like we don't sweat. You know, some people <laughs> like Versace. Me. <laughs> I don't need that. But let me get to my man. This is my homeboy right here. Like this guy, like, come on, man. Like, I, I want to hear. I, I want to hear a pastor defend this right here, cause, cause, like, this the four o'clock in the morning, dude. Right? When I be yelling, yeah, be yelling screaming. all the time. What's his yeah! name? What's his name? T- Kearney Thomas or something like that. But I just remember <laughs> watching him and just uh-huh. sitting there, like, okay, man, like, if if I, I can't help but to think, like, I hope I'm standing there mm-hmm. when you come up the stairs and God kick you right back down. I want to be standing. I want to be standing there. So you want to see him get kicked out of heaven? That, that you down said. the stairs. <laughs> it needs to be like 50,000 stairs, no rails, well, no nothing. Here, here's the key for us, us us pastors. For us pastors, man, we're, we're judged. When we stand before God, we're judged on two extremes. Mm-hmm. One, how we lived our life personally. Mm-hmm. And then two, how we've handled the people that God gave us charge over. Right, right. And if mm-hmm. we intentionally, you know, misled them and defrauded them, yeah. then we're going to have to pay you, for you, that. Yeah, you're going to get it. You're going to get it. Uh, now, I feel bad I for the people that, that if, really if, follow if him. His, if his approach, if that's just, you <laughs> That's know, not your style. That ain't my style. <laughs> but, you know, that might be his thing. That might be his charismatic thing. This. You know, but he been doing that, that for do years. to set him apart. So even if you ain't watching it and you hear it, 
you know that's him. You know that's him. And so you know, a lot of people do certain stuff that's like a catchphrase or something specific. Hey, that's a good. That's a good defense right there. I mean, that's one way I can really chalk it up. You know, I don't know because, like, take take for instance Jamal Bryant. Jamal Bryant, when he would be preaching, one of his catch phrases would be "preach black man." And that's what the church would chant back yeah. to him. So, so, and so that was his thing. So, you know, if you ever hear anybody else out here preaching, tell me about some tapping, they would say, Preach black man. Like, nah, dude, you got that from Jamal Bryant. And we know, you, know you did. We know you did. And if that. somebody started yelling like him, we're going to be like, I do. We know what you Because, got I mean, from. like, like TD Jakes, I think I can hear his voice from the other room and know it. Right. Because he's, know he's distinctive. So, yeah. he's worked hard enough. Mm-hmm. But TD Jakes will talk you out the draws, man. He did. <laughs> like, for real, he's smooth with it. But he's, you know, that's his craft. Yeah. You know, that that's his call. That's what he does. That's one person and that that's I, don't, his job. I don't know, man. Like, I don't feel bad. Like, like some, like the preachers of L.A., mm-hmm. like, I, I count their money. But, like, I don't count T.D. Jakes and, like, Osteen, like. And they got just as much they, as not I more. mean, yeah, they do the same thing, but, like. Only because you, you've personally classified them in different sections. Yeah. And so, and that's what people do, though. But we put it's hard people not to, in though. different groups based off of our personal preference, based off of what we perceived. Mm-hmm. And most of these people, we don't even know at all. I mean, we, I ain't never, 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 never met with. I ran into Dietrich Hatton. Uh, I was downtown one year. Me and my wife was getting ready to go to a New Year's Eve party with my fraternity. Mm-hmm. And Dietrich was walking through the hotel. I was like, hey, man, what's up? How you doing? No security, no nothing. Hey, man, how you doing? Boom. Gave me some doubt. We took a picture together. He went on about his business. Mm-hmm. But the average person be like, man, I can't go approach him. He gonna, he probably arrogant and yada, yada, yada. Because he look we like give that. People, but we don't give people a chance. Yeah, yeah. We hold preachers uh, to this standard, and we tell them, you better not come down from here. Yeah. But at the same time, definitely, we're holding them to a standard that you won't even try to reach. Mm-hmm. The people in the pew don't even have a standard, mm-hmm. but they want to hold the preacher to one. Right. And that's totally unfair. Yeah. Let, okay, let me, I'm going to get to this. So what you think of Kanye? Did you hear Kanye album, the gospel album? I got it. What you think? I like it. I like it. But, I mean, yeah, we like the music, but what you think Kanye doing? Honestly, man, I really believe, and I had a conversation in my Bible study about this. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't agree with me, but... I believe Kanye possibly has had a real conversion. I really you, you, do. You believe it? I do. Um, because at the end of the day, I don't know what God said to him. I don't think he said nothing. I'm, I'm saying. I'm just, I'm just saying. Like it's, I, I it's don't hard know because what his encounter may have been. I don't know because you know Kanye has gone through a lot of life turmoil. Yeah, he's, he, he's my, gone through a yeah. lot, and so I really believe I was on the Word Network. Uh, not too long ago on this thing called Young Preachers Edition with Greg Davis. Mm. And one of the people on the panel had said, and I agreed with it, that the reason the church has an issue with Kanye Mm. is because the church can't take credit for Kanye. Mm. Uh, We we can't take any credit for his civic process. We can't take any credit for him turning over a new leaf. Now, do we know if it's real? We won't know. We ain't gonna know. But we have to watch the fruit. The scripture says the tree is known by the fruit it bears. Let's look at the fruit of Kanye. Because if if we be honest, everybody in church has a past. Yeah. That's colorful, that's shameful. Mm-hmm. The only difference, Kanye Was is it? a well known person. He's, He's on an TV. artist. He's on TV. He has money. His life has always been public. Mm-hmm. So his life has always been open to scrutiny. Yeah. Let's be honest. Could you live up and manage that level of scrutiny? Man, I've been slapped somebody. Like I, I say that all the time. I want to be rich, but I do not want to be famous because so, I can't. I know I couldn't do it. And so I, now, I couldn't be no pastor neither because I would really be like, you need to leave that dude alone. Like it's it, it's hard. It, it is it's hard, hard not to it's, it's, like it's man. A hard, it's a hard road to uh, try, it, man. But you have to be faithful to it. That's why you have to be called to it. Mm-hmm. Saying something you pick up as you know, a hobby. That's what I said. So I, I, that's I, I guess that's where I'm at with Kanye. I hope you're not playing because you're you gonna be on the list of when I, I want to be standing there when he is, kick you. When when you have to stand before him and give an account, 
that you, you got to pay for it you're because th there is no in between. It's either yeah, you gonna be right. in heaven or you going to hell. Mm -hmm. There's no purgatory. There's no in between. Nope, there ain't none of that. Ain't no coming back through here. You right, ain't no, you ain't coming back as a dog mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. all that cat stuff people be talking about. Bicycle seat. No, you ain't doing none of that. <laughs> none of that. Yeah, I don't when, believe. When I gone, definitely don't believe you're that. You gone. Yeah. So. All right, so I got this. So, so you got any uh, events coming up at at your church or anything like that? Uh, right now, man, we're actually about to close out our year. This coming Wednesday mm. is our last Bible study for the year. Okay, we're not gonna come back until after the new year. Uh, we are having watch night service with uh, Wait, with a friend you, of mine. Let us get the address again. Make sure so I don't oh. want nobody for you. Know. Well, the address to my church. It's not where the watch night is gonna be. Oh, but okay. the address to my church though uh, is eighty eight. 06 Mac Avenue, City of Detroit. East side. Uh, that we on the east side, baby. <laughs> we right there on Mac, not too far That's from deep B Wick. That's deep. Yeah, we, we close to B Wick, Doc. Yeah. So if you know Mac and B Wick, that's yeah. east. Yeah. Uh, our services start at 10 a.m. Mm. We start at 10 a.m. And we're normally out, literally, 11 30, 11 45. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't hold you all day. We gonna come. We gonna worship. We gonna pray. We gonna pray. I gotta give you the word, and we gone. I got a question though. This, this. I was thinking about this. How you feel about why you up there preaching? Somebody just get up and walk out. I don't take it personal. Oh, okay. It, you have to develop that thick skin because there's a myriad of reasons why a person could have got up to walk out. Yeah, but I'm so just saying, I, I just, can't. I mean, I hold my pee and everything, man. I, you know. No nah, man, go to the bathroom. <laughs> I'm you just know, saying, like, like, I, like, I, you know, I just sit there. I just be like, all right, I'm gonna uh, just sit here until you get done. Because even now, when I'm up preaching, it's constantly folk walking, yeah, and no. if I get caught up in what they're doing, yeah, you lost then them. I lose my focus, mm. and so I have to stay focused on what I'm doing. Because although I may have one or two walking, I still got 30, 40 sitting here listening to me. Yeah, yeah. And so they deserve my undivided attention. I got okay. Here go, here go the question. This guy at work told me to ask you this. This guy at work told you to ask. Yeah, you this. He told you. Yeah. I hope he's watching. No, he he don't. I don't even think he got no Facebook. Okay, well you plus tell him he don't. Plus he don't believe in God. Okay. So this so. is this is a good one. He said, "What is taking God? What is it gonna take for him to come back?" With all the suffering and going, because mm -hmm. I just want to make sure I get the whole question. Now he said, "With all the suffering and stuff going on." Mm -hmm. And like how bad things is getting, mm -hmm. how bad they going and getting, because mm -hmm. they getting worse. True. Why is he sitting back just watch? Now let me, hold on, this is what I said. Let me give you my answer first. Okay. I said I think he waiting on us to get more on the same page. Okay. We we too spread out. You got mm -hmm. people over here don't believe, and then we got first of all we got thirty six different gods. Mm. Mm. -hmm. Okay. okay. So, and I, and is this right or wrong? Everybody Bible say if you you can't worship two gods. If you worship the wrong god, you are getting kicked down the stairs, right? Okay, I'm with you. And then you got the now. I just think that it take us getting more on the same page. Not necessarily praising the same god, but at least believing in something. Because there's a lot of people don't believe in nothing. And then you got all the woke people who trust me. First, a couple of things. One, most of these people. That's where they woke. Ain't even got out the bed. Ain't even. So we ain't gonna. Dress we ain't gonna. Them. We can't do that. We ain't gonna dress them. Uh, church. The scripture says that he's coming back for the bride, for mm. his bride. The church is his bride. Right mm. now, the body of Christ is divided. Right. That's we, what I we, said. We, we, we're very divided. We lost in the So yeah. there is a coming together that really needs to happen between these different denominations, religions, fellowships, and all of this other stuff. Yeah. We all claim we're preaching the same God. We're preaching about the same, you know, same Jesus, the one who died on the cross, rose up on the third day, and is going to come back again. Mm -hmm. But how we're preaching this Jesus, but you can't stand me because I'm Baptist and you, you know, Protestant mm -hmm. or yeah, Church of God or Christ, or whatever the case may be. So God is going to return when he gets ready. Scripture, scripture is plain and replete. No man knows the day nor the hour. I know, but what, 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 sun, but what would you... And I would just tell him that scripture. I don't oh, know. Okay. You don't know? Now, I I'm don't saying, know. that's what I say. My guess would be, I think he waiting on us to get on more on the same page. Because to try to answer that question would suggest that I know his thoughts right. and I don't. Yeah. He don't think the way I do. Yeah. You know, God doesn't operate he, he, in chronos he, he, He's seen time. it all. He know it all. So. Right. He don't operate in chronos time. He operates <clears throat> in kairos time. I'll be saying like uh what was that? The 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 Avengers movie, how they say like five years our time. Remember he went to the machine, so mm -hmm. it was only like five seconds. That's 
Because scripture, actually, that's scripture. Scripture mm. says that one day is as a thousand years mm. to him. To him, yeah. So, so I don't, it's, I don't know. That's what I say. And I'm say. comfortable with saying I don't know. But mm. what I will do is I'm going to make sure mm. as best I can that I'm prepared for whenever you when, decide when to show up. up. That's all I can do. Because it's going to come like a thief in the night. You don't mm. know when the thief is coming to yeah, your house. You don't know. But I'm saying, so what about the suffering part? Would you, I mean, why? I guess that would be... A lot of our suffering, honestly, I, I mean, believe, like with, with the killings and everything. Well, with, now with people, you know, murdering and things of that nature, uh, I believe that there is a fine line between a demonic influence mm. and a mental illness. Exactly, man. There, there's a fine line. Of, I, think we, I think people always want to be like, God took him home. No, that was the devil work, right? I don't think right. here's this, well, e- everything isn't on the spiritual side and everything ain't on the natural side, but it takes studying and really yeah. paying attention to understand the two. That's what I'm doing my doctoral research on now. Mm. The difference between those two. And that's what people got think cuz it's like it's no way that we're going to fight for a thousand years and you not get no hit in. You got to be crazy if you think that the devil not going to get a hit in. And the only reason you know what I'm saying, like they going at it. The only reason uh, a person would always be overtaken by the devil is if they don't do anything for their spiritual development. That's what I say. I, I tell Janetta that you all the time. To, Some people open a window for him. He exactly. he stand outside. It, exactly. He can't come in. You got to open the door for him. He can't do anything unless you allow unless you him. open you, that window for him. And he now here's what the right devil does. Here's what the devil does, man. You, you know my wife. Mm. You see my wife, yeah. man. My wife is a thug. I don't care nobody say. My wife is a gang. I'm scared of my wife. She watches it too. I'm scared of my wife. Okay. Now, as much as I love my wife, you know, Janet Jackson is my celebrity crush. Right. I okay. got Jill Scott. Okay. So you understand. But here's the thing. What the devil does is he says, "Okay, I know you got all this good, safe stuff at home." But I'm going to present to you what you like. Mm. And I'm going to lay it right there in front of you. All the time. And I'm going to say, ain't nobody looking. And I'm going to tell you all the reasons you should do it. So Janet Jackson comes in the room and she she say, hey, you can hug me. Then she says she want a kiss. Mm. Ain't nobody looking. Ain't nobody looking. Go ahead. Go on and get your kiss. Maury, green room. Right. <laughs> and, so, and so it's up to me to decide to uphold my moral compass. Right. Even though my wife isn't there, mm-hmm. I still have to do what's right. That's just him tapping there. on the window. Right. He's just tapping on the window. Yeah. He doesn't make you do anything. Nah. Oh, the devil may be with nah. nah. He only presented to you mm-hmm. what you liked or and the and stuff he done heard you talking about. Talking about something. If you get the opportunity, man, I'm going to tag that as soon as I get a chance. Mm-hmm. And you got a chance. You tagged it. And now look what done happened. Mm-hmm. You done lost your wife. You done lost your job. Kids. You lost your... And he won't say, oh, money. the devil came in and stole it. No, he no, didn't, didn't steal anything. No, you put it on you the You gave it to him. You set it out there for him. Right. Or you let him in to come get it. Exactly. Well, yeah. Let me let me get into this before we go. Uh, we got Miss Carmen Greatness remix coming, man. We going to take us a little break, y'all. Okay. Hang around. We got Pastor Alton Parks in here breaking it down, but I got something I want to hit him with before he get out of here. So y'all have at it. How you 
and basement. Big bro in my ear like you gonna make it. Stay focused, cause you the one to change it all. And never let your success be your downfall. Remember where you come from and what you represent. And this talent that you got, bro, is heaven sent. Never apologize for exposing your own truth. It's gonna be people that don't like what you do. Took it and ran with it, created my own path with the ambitions of putting Detroit on the map. I feel short at that, as you can see. But see, greatness is like history, it always repeats. No honor amongst thieves, so I work and earn everything. So unique, like Miss Karma when she speak. Melodic on the beat, make my cipher complete. This is God's doing, church preach. That's Miss Carmen Greatness Remix with, uh, I believe, Chaz uh, 3269. He got some good music out there, too, if y'all check that out, man. They got their stuff on all social media platforms. And um, y'all know how it go, man. Just check it out. I'll put the link in the description when we done and all of that good stuff. But I want to get into this while we got uh, we got Pastor Alton Parks in here. And um, let, me, let me go to this because um, I just want to see what we got to talk about. My issue with Santa Claus. Okay. Not necessarily my issue with Santa Claus. It was just like a post that I seen. And people be like, don't let your kid believe in Santa. I okay. think that's one. either one, you don't want to buy him nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Two, like, it's, it's like how I feel about it is like, black, I'm going to say black people. Mm-hmm. We got an issue with Santa Claus because that's the man's establishment. And it's just like, let that little baby had a little eventually them gonna boys gonna lean up. in on you and say daddy come on man with the they, they, cut, they cut the no santa malarkey you right. know what i'm saying so why sit your five-year-old on the couch and it ain't no santa claus mom and dad like why do that all right i think you chopping off their imagination and you probably ultimately make them probably scatter you. you you know uh crazy thing just this past saturday at our church, we had a uh, angel tree program, mm-hmm. you know, which is the program for incarcerated parents where people buy gifts in the name of the parent mm-hmm. and give it to the children. Uh, guess who was Santa Claus? Hmm. This guy right here. Yeah. So I dressed up as Santa Claus. One of the kids came in. Two things happened. Mm-hmm. One little boy came in and told one of the workers, he said, I ain't never seen a black Santa Claus. Yeah. So that opened him up to something more to say, you know, I don't have to always go by what commercialism shows me. Right. Then there was another little girl who was so excited because Santa Claus was in the building. Right. She kept tugging on her mama. I, I got to go over there mm-hmm. and kick it with me. kick it with me. Every time I walked around the room, she kept getting up giving me hugs. I believe it's okay to let your children have imagination because yeah you're going they're going to learn the truth you're going to get 10 or but something like that and lean there's in. nothing wrong with having a healthy imagination mm-hmm. um right, i would just say you be careful that you don't go overboard with it right but it's okay to nurture a healthy imagination there's nothing wrong with that now when they start asking you questions but that's another thing that i got, i got about the, the black santa okay like santa claus been white like Mm-hmm. I think we we can't fight every battle. You know what I'm saying? Like right. let Santa Claus be white. Like 
You know what I'm saying? Like, he's been white the whole time. That's how I feel about it. Like, a black Santa. Here's the thing I got about with black people and black Santa. Okay. First of all, it's fake. It's a white man's holiday and Santa Claus fake. I'm not giving him no credit. But if he is real, mm -hmm. he black. Like, how y'all gonna slice it all them different kind of ways? You know what I'm That's my issue with it. Like, well, th those are our, our, our pro black people. Yeah, that's what I'm Everything saying. Everything has to be black. Everything got to be black. And th this one of the things I feel like really don't, like, we really... You know, my, my thing is, if, we ain't gotta, if you're we ain't not gotta buying fight this into one. it, then don't buy into it. Right. You know, you can't buy into it and then only say, well, I only want half of it. No. If you're going to buy into it, buy into it. If buy into it the whole way, yeah. Then you're not. But don't... But necessarily <laughs> rain on somebody else's parade. You ain't and and then the, the thing that make me mad, they try to put it on your kid. Or, or you need to tell your kid. Like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Now we getting into it. Like, come on, man. Yeah, like, I tell my kid what I want to tell him. I tell him what I want to tell him. Uh, I only got issues when you try to tell me Jesus was white. Then I, I then, we, then we then we then we got an argument because you can't. That's why I say let me. We can fight me. that fight. I'm right. not fighting no Santa fight with you. No, that, that that's not important. That's I not. I'm not, about Santa, I'm not gonna waste I ain't no yeah. the Easter bunny. The Easter bunny you got that too. I ain't fighting none of that. You, you yeah. can have it. You, you, you can have all that Power Rangers or whatever. Like it, it ain't that big. Of it a deal. ain't that big of a deal because to me. when Christmas comes, what they said, James Bond. You see how they was tripping? It just Albert supposed to be James Bond. They get upset over fictional characters because they. I believe, this is just my personal opinion, mm -hmm. is that they want to remove everything uh, and try to say it's taboo for anybody whose son has, whose skin has been kissed by the sun to play these prominent and dominant mm -hmm. roles when in actuality you are where you are now mm -hmm. because of what mm -hmm. us sun-kissed mm -hmm. folk have done we have for done you. done anyway. Uh, and we bought into your foolishness of not trusting one another. Right, right. You told me don't trust the person that looks like me, but I can trust the person that looks like you. And we bought into it. Then we passed yeah. that foolishness down. That's why uh, we, we I'm about to go off into something totally different. Same got nothing to do with Sam at this point. <laughs> but, but I'm saying but, but it's but facts that's though. Why, that's why <laughs> they're really uh no, I think more concerned stuff... and more scared of us coming together. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying I think that's that's where we end up having these fights because mm -hmm. We so used to fighting, right. so we fighting over stuff that don't. That, matter. Now we fighting over stuff that don't matter. When, right. Because as soon as Alton walk in, uh, it must be fight time. We take my. Right. No, nah, he coming in here to sit down and talk. And see, we can we haven't mastered the art of being able to disagree agreeably. No, we haven't mastered. That We're art. a long way from uh, that, man. If if <clears throat> if you don't, our our problem is if you don't believe how I believe, if you don't see it the way I see it, then you hating on me. I'm not hating on I'm you. I just got you. a different opinion. That's what I say. I let my kid believe in Santa Claus. That's I'm not hating on. I'm not a coon or a, I'm not not woke or whatever that means. I don't know. I, I, I don't, don't know, know what being woke. Actually I don't even is know what that is because most of the people that I've heard say they were woke were sleepwalking. So yeah. I'm, 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 but that's I'm the confused. thing though. Like you don't want your kid to believe in Santa Claus, but like it's women out there well, believe. If that's the case. Then don't put up your Christmas tree. Don't do nothing. Don't do anything that points to what we know as Santa Claus. Or, or what we doing. Leave it alone. But I'll be saying like like women, like y'all believe these dudes about to flip your taxes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like for real, you believe that girl really like you and it ain't got nothing to do with your job and your car and your money, but your kid can't believe it's Santa. Like we don't even have a chimney. So eventually them boys going to tell me, daddy, Santa okay. ain't coming down no right. chimney because we ain't even got one. one. We've been here for 10 years. So why would I cut him down at seven? My thing is the best thing I say people can do is, okay, I got the iPad. Mom and daddy got the iPad, but that remote control car Santa Claus got it. Like if right. you want to be in on the act, you know, you, you can give them one or two. That's what we do. We give one or two mm -hmm. gifts from Santa, but everything else came from mom and daddy's hard work because what I don't want uh, us to do is to teach our children to have more uh, honor and respect for somebody that's fictitious. That's fi yeah, right. That's than what I'm they saying. do for those yeah. that are actually Santa ain't getting no credit over here for no day. iPad. No, right. He, you know the, the little stuff. Yeah, he, you know, he got Santa, you that Santa hat. You up. He got you, know you them socks. Saying? You know but, what I'm saying? Right. They don't even make the iPads iPhone. in the North Pole. Like, right. No, the I'm, iPhone and stuff like that. Nah, yeah, me and mommy went to the store and we got that. We got that, and that's why I be. I mean, I just was reading posts on Facebook, like you know, just and like on Instagram where they just like. 
they just like real black power with it all of a sudden. Man, like, where, where did Christmas Facebook, get so black power? Instagram and Facebook is the only place you can be everything but who you really are. Oh, man. You can, so, be, any, you can be anybody, man. Most of these people put on a show for folk they don't even know, and they know they'll never see, so they don't care. When, when I say, when I found out that you can get on the internet, and you can spend fifty dollars, and they send you fifty thousand dollars in fake money that look mm -hmm. real. I was done with the internet. Yeah, so you got, you got to you got to watch it. Everybody buys into Man. you know different things, but. Don't rob a child of their imagination. Yeah, I think that's, that's all I'll be done. saying, man. Like, just, We've just, cost these kids to grow up too soon. And then when they grow up too soon, they start doing grown-up stuff, and now you in court with them. And that's why your baby got a baby at 13. And, and, and you only let 27. Let children <laughs> be children. Man, I, that's why I say, like, Nick be running around, bouncing him and Michael running around, I'll be cool with it. Even when Nick... He had a Q-tip in his ear and busted his ear. They ain't here wrestling and jumping around or something. Busted. His ear. I'm like, that's still kid stuff. I don't want him to get hurt, but at least he's still doing kid stuff. He don't talk about killing nobody. He don't talk like neither right. one of them boys. I'm cool with that. Mm -mm. And that, that's just what we have to learn how to do. Yeah, is man, that's crazy. give our children back their childhood. Because yours was stolen, you're still in theirs. I think that's what it be, man. You got to give it back. I said that I was up there when I went and picked Nick up the other day, man. Like. I don't like everybody know how I feel about like kids. I think the mother really got the control. And when mm -hmm. I went to pick Nick up, like you can hear these girls, like it was like two ladies, they was like cussing at their kid, like going off, cussing like a grown up. And I'm like, man, like you'll talk to him, like, come on, man, but you'll take Santa away. Like, give because women, women and men deal differently. And I, I'm, I'm gonna tread lightly here. Uh, I don't know who's watching, and I won't get I won't get myself Man. in trouble. But women operate out of emotion. Men operate out of logic when right. they deal with and address situations. My pastor, Bishop Edgar Van, gave me an analogy where he said, "Men are like wallets, or men are like pockets. Women are like purses. Mm -hmm. With the purse, you open it up, everything is in there." You might have to dig through some stuff to find what you're looking for. But it's in there. But it's in there. Mm -hmm. Men are like pockets. We compartmentalize. Yeah. So if I don't want to deal with what's in my left pocket, I'm not going in my I'm left pocket. I'm not going in there. I'm going to go in my right pocket because that's the pocket that has the stuff I want to deal with. Mm -hmm. And so that's how we've even translated things in life. That's how we deal with our children and things of that nature. And we have to learn how. Men have to learn how to be a little bit more. Uh, emotionally stable. No, we don't. Yes, we do. Because we were taught that <laughs> no, growing I'm saying, up, yeah, we that, give a little you bit. know, having emotions as a man, that, make, that, that ain't make what you, men That do. make you weak. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, th yeah, that's, yeah. that's really not because I just, I that's why so... we have so many dysfunctional relationships yeah. because a woman's trying to get you to a little bit. show her But that's what I, I kind of be scared you, of. You, 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 told, you were told you can't do that. But that's what I'm kind of scared of. Like once you get to twisting that knob, but, and see, that's because when you twist that knob and it seems like it's running like a faucet because you got so much stuff built up that you were told as a man you got to hold it in. But holding it in is really killing you. It's causing you undue yeah, but, stress but sometimes you got to good. have a release. You, you need to have a release. And now, granted, you can't tell everything to your wife. Right. But, but that's what the, but I'm saying. But, but that's, that'll be my issue. Like once you get to turning it. You got you got to you got to be willing or you got to be able to handle what comes with that. But with the woman, she's gonna give you everything. Yeah. You you ain't really got to wonder what she's thinking. Just just wait a while and she gonna tell you. Yeah. So eventually when she get it, mad or when she get mad or too happy. Or it been three, four days and mm -hmm. you thinking it's over, but she get mad again and she gonna tell you some more. Mm -hmm. So but it's it's learning how to adequately raise our children to not only have an imagination, but raising them how on how to have proper relationships, even with themselves. Oh, we ain't got no examples, neither, though. And see, that's another thing. So now we have to change. We have to be conscious and intentional in changing that dynamic. So we have mm -hmm. to be the men oh, that man. we didn't see Ooh. and create nah, nah, nah. that balance and that safe space for I look, our I look, sons. I look around me. To come and say, hey, dad, this is what I'm thinking. This is what I'm feeling. 
and be able to talk about it without calling him weak or a punk or you That's lame. what I be saying like about a father like no. if if they come if my boys come to me with something and I don't know I'm going to tell them. I don't know go talk to Alex. You know, it's like I don't, I don't know, know about or, like a fraternity. I don't like when you went to college, daddy. I was the fraternities. I don't know. When you go talk to Alton. Like it's a lot. It's a lot of men won't do that. They'll be like, they'll shut it right down. I don't know nothing because, about it. Don't worry about that. Just right. focus it, on it, football. It yeah, and we, we can't do that. And we can, yeah. And so we we have to teach our sons. I don't know how we got here, but we have to teach our sons how to cultivate uh, healthy male relationships. Yeah. And but yeah. we as fathers have to present to them what a healthy male relationship. That's, that's, I, I that's, that's the tightrope brothers, right there. I got some covenant brothers that, you know, when it comes to, you know, this whole pastoring piece, mm. when I'm having, you know, I need to bounce some ideas off and, you know, I just need to vent and let out some steam. Mm. I got some people that I can talk to that understand where mm. I am because that's where they are. Mm. And they can sometimes talk me off the ledge. And I always say you got to have more was who was this iris graham she said hey pastor hey by, iris what's by, happening by the way i think we need to learn how to have more than one friend i can't come to alton with all my issues oh man you got to have more than one friend it's a lot of people out there like they only friends is they family they only friends is they co-workers i think that's unhealthy and that's not right uh, you know or their only friend is their spouse oh I man think that's unhealthy. you lost i feel I like you, you worse off than me because by you know, far if, you, if you're doing like that you know, my wife would tell me, uh, you can go hang out with your, you know. Yeah. I have time where it's with family. Then I got time where, all right, baby, I'll see you when I get home. Yeah. Um, or we go here together. Mm -hmm. You go here, I go here, and we go here together. You, you, you have to have more than one friend simply because <clears throat> you need, you know, variety helps you develop. Yeah. And various opinions help you develop. Because mm -hmm. if I only got one friend, I'm only going to always have one point of view. Yeah. So, but... But if you, is on, if you is only friend too, y'all probably going to agree on nonsense because y'all don't want to lose your only friend. Right. So <laughs> like, your circle should never be full of people on the same level you are. Yeah. I, I say that too. Like, I, I'm glad I got friends that's doing better than me. Because it gives me something to shoot for. Because everybody's doing what you're doing. Or you're the, you doing the best, you're going to quit working. Well, if, you, if you're the only person in your circle that's doing good, that means you're scared to do better. So right. you keep the people that's beneath you. Because, yeah. Cause that's really your insecurity. That's what the man through. said on uh, watching on YouTube. He said once you, you get up to the level, it's like when you play the game, you, it's level one, then level two. But when you go to level two, you back at the bottom. Mm -hmm. People would rather just stay at the top of level one. Right. And, and say. And never maximize that full and never And never get up there. Which yeah. hurts them. Yeah, I, I, it's crazy, man. But. I just wanted to tap on the Santa Claus stuff for a minute. Let me put this. Let me put this black Santa up here, man. Like, I don't. I'm telling you, I don't feel the black Santa. I'm gonna be straight up with you. Well, you know, I, I was the I'm black not, Santa. I'm Santa. I'm not digging the black Santa, man. <laughs> so I think Santa Claus is just white, and if you not go participate in him being white, and again, that goes back. Then to, just let it go to the whole traditional aspect of how we see life, how things have been pushed on us. How mm. things have been given to us, yeah. And so it's I mean, hard a lot of times to break from, <laughs> you know, to break from traditional thought and traditional thinking. I know, but I'm saying like we never. It, it, to me, we never debated Santa Claus into like a but few this, this years ago. This is a different. <laughs> That's what time. you said. I'm saying like right. this, this is one of those things. I'm like we getting gunned down by police and all this stuff, and, hey, you, wanna and you wanna you wanna you wanna talk about Santa Claus? Right. Like we gonna argue about something for two hours. Let it's me. really just a distraction to keep you from being to keep focused you from being. on real. But issues. I think this is our own distraction. Like I think black people threw this. Out. White people ain't say Santa Claus black. White people don't care. They don't care. As they want that we're cash. not doing anything. That's gonna create wealth for our families. Exactly. They don't care. They don't care because they they let that black Santa do whatever he, he, go like, ahead. he can be black. He can be purple. Whatever. He can have rainbow hair. They don't care as long as yeah. you come out and buy one and put it in your house. Man, that's what, and I make my money. That's what I just. But I just, let you start a toy store. Then they did. Yeah. Then now they're gonna pay attention nah. to you because now you're cutting. They don't care. That's what I say. They don't care about no black Santa. It they don't matter care. what color you think Santa Claus is as long as you come to the mall spend your money. Right. And they don't care because about I that. bet you in China the Santa Claus is Chinese property. <laughs> I think that's what I'm saying. Like I think this one we need to just let them have, man. Like it's not important. I, 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 I could care less. I just don't like. I don't like fighting over that, and I don't like people telling people that it, telling these babies that Santa Claus ain't real. But like I said, you believe in the person you with, and he done cheated on you 47 times. 
And it's just like, how you gonna do that, but not be, a, if we gonna worry about stuff, let's worry about everything. Well, you know. Uh, what do you say, what Richard say, if you the smartest in the room, it's time to leave that room, I think. Exactly, I, I agree, Richard. That's, that's, you that's, can't that's, be the smartest person in your room. Or you get, well. That's it for me. You, I, okay. can't, I can't even do that. Dog. It was good having you over here. I appreciate it, I think it, we man. got through a I lot of stuff. It. You want to give them the uh, address again in case they want to visit your church? Uh, one more time. My church is Samaritan uh, Missionary Baptist Church, 8806 Mac Avenue on the east side of Detroit. <laughs> Our worship services start at 10 a.m. every Sunday. Mm. Uh, if you want to come out to a Bible study, it's Wednesday nights at 6 p.m., one hour from 6 to 7. This Wednesday, though, is our last Bible study for the year then we're out for the next two weeks. I believe in family time, man. Spend time with oh, your yeah, family, definitely, definitely. holiday season, and we'll pick it back up in the new year. Do y'all do concerts and stuff at y'all church, like at Ebenezer? We haven't yet. Um, no. Right now, I'm trying to work. I'm looking for a musician, mm. looking for an organ player, looking for a drummer. I should get on so, that one. If you play, man, come holler at me. No, I can't play. Uh, I'm just saying, but I if you know some people that's you know, looking for some place to play, uh, hit my inbox, let's talk, You know, let's see what we can do. All right, well, it was good having you here, man. We uh, we had a good, nice little chat. Hey, man, I appreciate it. Hey, anytime, man. Anytime just, just, I come back. What, what, what you got? You say y'all, what can they find on the YouTube if they want to catch, uh, just catch look some of your up, work? Look up Samaritan Missionary Baptist Church, the Lighthouse, uh, and you'll find all of our worship services, the sermons, the uh, teaching series, all of that is on our YouTube page. You can mm. also like us and follow us on Facebook. Samaritan Missionary Baptist Church. Okay, there we go. We get them platforms, man. Let me run this past you one more time. It's the uh, Gmail right here, man. If y'all got questions about the show or about the music or send some music in or anything that you want to know or you want to be a guest on the show, it's Mike with a mic 313 at gmail.com. Just send your stuff in, man. And remember, subscribe to the YouTube page and you share this. And we, you know how we do. We're going to get something away after everything get wrapped up. So... Y'all folks have a good night, man. We getting out of here. You were just listening to. Thanks for listening to. You were just listening to. Mike with the mic. With the mic.